my name is Emily. On behalf of our Killer Whale training team, I'd like to welcome you to Orca Encounter. Being a part of SeaWorld's mission is more than just a job. We are proud of what we do. And it is a privilege for us to care for, build relationships with, teach, and learn from these amazing animals. Now, more than ever, we are honored to share our relationships with the whales and what we have learned with all of you. We hope you enjoy Orca Encounter!
about their size, speed, power, and problem-solving abilities. These behaviors keep our whales active and engaged. SeaWorld's killer whales have inspired generations of guests to care about our natural world, and we're excited to share their story with all of you here today. Killer whales are the ocean's top predator. They use cooperation and communication, not just size and strength, to take their place at the top of the ocean's flood. At the bottom are small animals, like krill. At the top, the apex predator, the killer whale. Killer whales are as big as a bus, faster than an Olympic swimmer. We're going to see all of that and more. These behaviors contribute to an environment full of enrichment. We spent days, weeks, months, and years building relationships with our whales. This creates trust, and that allows us to do some amazing things. For example, when you visit the doctor, you can present your arm to draw blood, or step on the scale to see how much you weigh. It's much the same with our whales. Today, you'll see our whales moving together, in unison. These synchronized behaviors strengthen social bonds and enable them to problem solve as a group. Working together as a team is what makes them the ocean's top predator. Scientifically known as our sinus orca, and commonly called killer whales. Here at SeaWorld, we refer to them as Katina, Molia, Nilani, Trua, and Makayo, our killer whale family. Makayo is our youngest whale. He's 11 years old. And our oldest is Makayo's mother, Katina, who is 45 years old. Katina is also the matriarch or leader of our pod. SeaWorld's animal training techniques create a language between us and the whales. It's a language of learning through positive reinforcement, encouragement, commitment, and care. Through these techniques and our relationships, the whales learn to trust us. They even take an active role in their own health and well-being. One of the first healthcare, healthcare behaviors we train is a voluntary blood sample. Our whales learn to roll ventral or upside down and present their tail. This not only gives us a great look of their entire body, but it also gives us access to easily seen blood vessels on the white undersides of their tail flukes. Our veterinarians come once a month and our whales are trained to remain calm and relaxed throughout the procedure. Now you may notice our trainers rubbing or massaging on the whales, whether on their backs, pectoral livers, or tail flukes. The whales have very sensitive skin, and this is just one way that we can reward them for remaining calm during procedures like this. It's also a great way for us to strengthen our relationships with the whales. Now taking a blood sample is just one way we can make sure that our whales are staying healthy. Another important diagnostic is weighing our whales. We're able to weigh our whales by asking them to slide their bodies up and out of the water onto a killer whale size scale, located in one of our adjacent pools. We have Katina here demonstrating this in our slide out for us. Now you'll notice the space between Katina's dorsal fin and her tail flukes is still in the water. That's the powerhouse of the whale. It's called the peduncle. And it's very muscular and very heavy. With the peduncle still in the water, we wouldn't be weighing the whole whale. So we simply ask our whales to lift their tails up and out of the water. <laughs> Training this posture enables us to ensure accuracy, so we know that our younger whales are growing properly and that our older whales are maintaining a healthy weight. And the care isn't just physical. Mental stimulation and play are vital, and we surprise and engage with our whales at every opportunity. Play is how killer whales teach their young to hunt. For the adults, play is important too. It seems that they just enjoy having fun. Making time for play is an important part of life for killer whales and for us. Hey everybody, I'm over here on the left side of the pool. Do you guys like to play? Yeah, me too. Killer whales learn a lot by playing. They also learn through observational learning and mimicry. From the moment they're born, killer whales learn necessary life skills by playing follow the leader with their mothers and other whales. We're going to have them play 
and follow the leader with all of you here today. So left side of the stadium, stand up for me. On the count of three, I'll get you just a moment, right side. On the count of three, we're gonna take our hands, put them on our sides, and we're gonna spin in a circle, ready? One, two, three, spin. And she's got it. So you'll notice that Nelanio is paying very close attention to you. Killer whales are very curious animals and can often be seen spy hopping or jumping completely out of the water to get a better look at their surroundings. Nelani is going to demonstrate this behavior with a bow at stage. So when she comes out of the water, let's give her a big cheer. All right, right side of the stadium, it's your turn. Everybody stand up for me. Mimi's going to teach you a behavior called a breach. So on the count of three, take your pointer fingers and throw them over your left shoulder. One, two, three. So killer whales breach for a number of reasons. Whether it's to surprise their prey, to scratch an itch, or just to show off. It's their way of saying that they have arrived. observation of the killer whales in our care has shed light on many mysteries surrounding these amazing animals. For example, the gestation period of a pregnant killer whale is 17 months. That's information that would be impossible to obtain in the wild. Some information, however, can only be gained through field research. That's why SeaWorld partners with groups like NOAA and the Norwegian Orca Survey to advance global education. Now, killer whales are powerful animals. And perhaps the best expression of that power is when we've seen them hunt. Killer whales stand apart. They have no natural predators, and just about any other ocean animal could be their dinner. Depending on where they live and their chosen prey, they've developed some epic hunting techniques. Off the coast of South America, killer whales will beach themselves riding in on waves just long enough to catch prey. They'll also create waves that knock animals like penguins or seals from ice breaks. Most importantly, they cooperate, communicate, and coordinate as a team. Here's footage of killer whales corralling a school of herring. A whale dips in and feeds, while the other whales keep the fish together with swipes of their tail fins. So killer whales create waves when they hunt and they use their tail flukes to stun their prey. You're about to see a demonstration. For our whales, it's a high energy activity session. But for you, it means it's time to get wet.
food every day. In the wild, killer whale diets depend on their location and the time of year. Unfortunately, overfishing, pollution, and other factors are having serious impacts on some killer whale populations. Killer whales are impressive animals. It's pretty obvious why they're the top predator in the ocean. That means killer whales are invincible, right? Wrong. Killer whales depend on a plentiful food source and a clean environment. They're completely dominant, yet completely dependent. When it comes down to it, killer whales are not the most powerful animal in the ocean. <laughs> Mystery. We are all inside. 
Enjoy the rest of your day at SeaWorld. Bye, everyone.